Hi everyone, this is Claudine Helmuth and I am here today to show you how to print and cut my Retro Oven Cupcake Box Kit using the SureCuts A Lot 3 software. Now it's very easy to do in SureCuts A Lot 3. You can see here there's a little button right here that says SVG and then you can see the little window that pops up that says Import SVG. And first I'm going to show you the back of the oven and the back of the oven on the SVG kit comes in two parts. So first we'll open up the left side and get it on our page and then we'll open up the right side. And the reason it's in two parts is because otherwise it won't print with the registration marks from the cutting software. It was just too large of a file when it was 10 inches across. So if you have the PDF hand cutting version, you'll notice this slight change with the SVG version. So now we've got the both sides of the back of the oven in place and we want to click this preview button, which is this little piece of paper with the magnifying glass. And you want to make sure that you're within these registration marks. So that are over here, that your images are not going outside of the registration marks. And another thing you can do is you can also rotate. So I can click this and then I can right click and choose transform, rotate, and I can type in 90 degrees. And then that will give us just that little bit more room, but that's totally optional. Then we'll click preview again, make sure everything is within the lines. One other thing that you might want to turn on is you might want to go to Cutter Preview Options and then make sure Show Print Margins is checked. Also make sure Show Print and Cut Registration Marks is checked. And then when you click on the Preview button, you will see right here it says my printer, Canon Series Print Margin. So you can also at this time double check to make sure that your all of your elements and your registration marks are within your print margin. So that all looks good. And another thing I'd like to quickly mention is over here you can see under my document window my mat size. So I've got eight and a half by 11 because that is the size of my paper that I am using. If you are using A4 or a different size paper, you will want to change it. First, I found that a little confusing in shortcuts a lot because it's technically my paper size and not my mat size, but in this software, you want your mat size to be the same as the paper that you are printing on. One way to change your mat size is over here in the properties window. A second way is by right clicking and choosing mat size and then choosing your size. And a third way is to go to cutter, mat size, and then choose the size that you would like. So now we are ready to print and cut. And all we need to do is click this piece of paper with the scissors icon. And what I'd like to draw your attention to quickly over here is how the page is shown on this little preview area. So it's going to want us to put our piece of paper vertically on our cutting mat going from zero inches to eight inches. And then all we need to do is click this little print and cut button that is in the lower left hand corner of this pop up window. And then we are going to select print and then click print again. So we can see here that it has all printed out and you can see all three of the registration marks. Since I'm using the silhouette machine, this is what my registration marks look like. Your machine, your registration marks may be slightly different. And then I just wanted to show you the type of paper that I'm using. I like to use the Staples Photo Supreme matte paper. It's a great weight. It's not too heavy. It's not too light. It's also not very expensive but it's perfect sturdiness to be able to hold your cupcakes and sweet treats. So now we are ready to put this onto our cutting mat. So this is my cutting mat for my silhouette machine. And you wanna make sure that you line it up so that it looks just like it does on your screen. And I usually take a minute or a couple seconds to get it lined up as straight as possible. And then you're just going to press it into place. And so now I'm just going to feed it into my machine. And then I will press 
detect registration marks, but before I do that, quick double check this area in the cut settings to make sure that you're using the right paper. I'm using cardstock, so that's perfect. So now I'm ready to detect registration marks. And so now it has finished detecting registration marks. You see the cut button is glowing blue and it says marks detected okay. So that means it is ready to cut. So I'm just going to press cut. So here it is all out of the machine and finished cutting. So now we can just remove our paper. And I just want to show you this quickly. There will be excess color around your image and that's because I added a bleed to all of my SVG images because printers and cutters can each shift slightly just a little bit one direction or another so that way you're not getting any white paper edges showing. And then to remove the rest of your images from your mat, I like to use these little spatulas. They're very handy in getting the smaller pieces off, and I even like to use them for the larger pieces. And what's great about this is it's already got its score lines included, so we can just go ahead and fold along the score lines. And then to put the back of the oven together, you could apply double-sided tape. I have a tape gun here, but you could just use regular old double-sided tape. It will work just fine. And then I'm just going to apply it to this tab L and then line it up very carefully with my score line to make sure everything's straight and that it's even at the top as well as the bottom and then press to secure. Now I've got a couple extra little tips to share with you, how to add text to the cupcake flags, and then I'm going to show you how to put it all together so you will have a complete finished oven. For the cupcake tray, this is just vector lines, so they're just cutting lines only. So you don't need to print and cut this file. So what's great about that is you can use scrapbook paper, you can make it have a cute pattern, or you can use leftover scrap paper. Now I've clicked on the preview button, so that's why you're seeing it all in the red lines. And I've changed my mat size to 12 by 12 because I have a piece of scrapbook paper that I'm going to be using. Now you do want to still make sure that you are within the registration marks. So you want to make sure that your cut lines do not go outside of that or else your file will not cut. So I'm just going to scooch this one down a little bit and that's okay. And I can add a second one if I want to. So you can fit a couple of them on there. I'm just pressing Control C to copy and Control V to paste. And I'm going to move this one over here and let's just check to make sure, yes, we're in the registration marks. So that's good enough. I could play around and try to get a third one on there, but I think for now, just to show you guys how it works, that should work just fine. So now we are ready to cut, and this is a lot like printing and cutting. First, we're going to click on this piece of paper with the scissors. But before we do anything else, you wanna get your paper on your mat and feed your mat into the machine. So once you're already got your paper loaded, then click cut. So now the cupcake trays have finished cutting, so let's pop them out. And what's really fun is because you can use scrapbook paper, you can use all kinds of different patterns. And then you even have these leftover circles here that you could use for something else. So everything is removed from my mat and you can see the cute little cupcake tray there. And it's already got the score lines already in it. So these are so easy to put together. All you need to do is just fold it up along all the score lines. And then we're just going to apply some double-sided tape just like we do to the oven. And then you're just going to take the edges and match them up to each other. 
So now we've just got one more thing to get ready and then we are going to be all set to assemble our oven and put it all together. So to get started, I'm going to import my SVG and you can see here, it just looks like a rectangle. And that's because I make a bleed around all of my print and cut files. So that way you won't get any white area showing. But when I click on preview, you can see it's going to cut out as a cute little cupcake flag. So we wanna move this down below the registration marks. And if you want to be able to see what's going on while you're working on it, just go to view show outlines only. And that's kind of handy because now we can see where the fold line is going to be for the cupcake flag. And we can see both sides of the flag and we can see where it's all going to cut out. So it just makes everything so much easier. Now to add the text, we're going to click over here on the text tool that's on the left hand side of my screen. You can see it's called the type tool. And I'm just gonna click and now I get my blinking cursor and I can type in and you can see here the text. So now my stroke color is white. I'm going to choose none for stroke and then my fill color, I would like that to be white. So I'm going to choose that. Now don't be surprised that it's not showing up because remember we turned on show outlines only. So we're not going to get to see anything until we turn that off. So there you can see it's white. So I'm gonna turn show outlines only back on again so I can see what I'm doing. Now over here on this side of the screen, you can see all of your font options and text. You could choose your font, make it bold, all that kind of stuff. Now I want to make it smaller. So up here in the position and size window, there's a width and a height, and then there's, I'm going to check keep proportions. So I'm just going to make it smaller, just click it down until I get it in the size that will fit on one side to stop that from happening where you're moving a layer that you don't want to. Over here in the layers window, just make sure to click lock on the flag layer or whatever layer that it is that you don't want to move. That will make things so much easier. So here, now I've got my bun in the oven text and it looks like it's still a little too big. So I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller. So that looks like a good size there for that side of the cupcake flag. And then I'm just going to highlight that and do control C or you could right click and choose copy and then click away and then right click and choose paste. And I'm going to scroll that over to the other side. And you could have it say different things on the different sides of your cupcake flag if you want. But this, this looks good to me, okay. And now there's just a little bit more that we need to do before we print this out. So what we wanna do over here in the appearance window is we wanna make sure that the text is highlighted and then we wanna choose under cut line type. We wanna choose print plus cut print. We just want it to print and no cutting. So I'm going to select that. But now I have to make sure to go to the other text. So any other text that you add, you just wanna make sure to go and select print plus cut print. And now I'm going to go to view and uncheck show outlines only and I can get a better idea of how my text looks. And then I'm just going to turn it back on again just to make sure that everything is even and that looks good. And then you would follow the directions for printing and cutting, which would be to click on the little piece of paper with the scissors and then follow the prompts. So that's it, that's all you've gotta to do to add text to any of your print and cut printables without having it cut the text at the same time. So on all of my printables, I have the lettered tabs being the ones that get tape or glue. And what I'm going to use for that is um, my tape gun. So all I've done is gone straight down because those are all lettered tabs and then I'm going to just trim in here where the tape has run into the 
empty area because then that that will fold nicely and then down here are the lettered tabs the up here by the oven door are not lettered tabs because that is what makes the door open and close so we don't want to glue those shut okay so now let's start assembling it and here we've got the back and the sides of the oven so you can see how that works and we need to attach this letter tab A to the center back and then we're going to apply tab K up here to the top of the oven like that and you just want to make sure you get those folds lined up here these folds these folds and then this fold lined up nicely and press it down so now i've got one big piece it doesn't even fit all on camera but you can see it's like one big piece it's going to start to make sense here in one second when we flip it over and i'm going to pull in these tabs and i'm going to bring this the side of the oven up like this and I'm going to press it down to the table so I know I've got it nice and even and then I'm going to release that tab and then I'm going to do the same over here so now you can see we've got the bottom the back the sides like that and then this is obviously going to be the front door so that's easy we don't need to worry about that right now now we're going to do the top of the oven. So we want to get these folded in and just press to right there so that it's nice and close. And then same thing to the other side. I like to do the whole, each level of the oven. So get it nice and even. There we go. And then this side you kind of sometimes need to bend these away because they have adhesive on them they can get a little bit tricky so now we're going to do this part of the oven let me make sure that they're both there we go so let me uh, focus for you so you can see so just press that in and then press down and same thing on the other side and then press down so that's right there so you can see how that's going and then lift this part up and you want to get it nice and even with the edge as much as possible and same thing on this side okay so now you can see that's all together. Then you can just add your cupcake. So I've added one of the included cupcake flags to this cupcake and you just slide that into your cupcake holder and then slide it inside and then go ahead and close the door. And you could add one of these um, little circles to hold your little front door closed but this door secures nice and tightly at least with this paper from staples that i was using so i don't think that you're going to have to use that and don't forget you can also cut out the window and add a little piece of acetate there if you want to see the cupcake inside and as a finishing touch let me just get out all the cute little colors of the ovens here so you can see them all as a finishing touch you can fill out one of the little oven mitts that come and add that to your oven if you want a little gift tag to go on there as well so i hope that you really like these retro ovens that i have come up with and you can find them in my shop with all of my other printable kits